The excellent throw is one of the most important things you can learn to progress faster in Pokemon Go. They increase your rate of XP gain, improve your chances of catching raid bosses, and improve your efficiency at catching every type of Pokemon. In one community day with a 3x XP bonus, I was able to average 3000 XP per catch due to my mastery of the excellent throw. There have been countless questions about how to achieve it, countless articles trying to explain it, and yet, for many trainers, the excellent throw remains elusive. Welcome to the excellent Pokédex. In this video, we will discuss excellent throws in more detail than is probably reasonable. I am obsessed with excellent throws, and want to share some of that obsession with you. Make no mistake, as a precise physical skill, there is no substitute for practice, but I will do my best to send you in the right direction. I've included chapter markers so you can skip to the sections that interest you the most, but it's better for my metrics if you just watch the whole thing. First, to get everyone on the same page, we'll briefly talk about excellent throws and, at a surface level, how you get them. Then, we'll dive into why you should aim for excellent throws, a detailed analysis of the concrete benefits that practicing excellence will get you. Finally, we'll discuss excellent throw technique, and a path all the way from beginner to mastery, including how to use this channel to accelerate your progress. First, let's briefly get on the same page about what excellent throws are, as well as how they are achieved. Compared to other throws in Pokemon Go, the excellent throw earns you the most XP and has the highest catch rate, but presents more of a challenge to achieve. On the catch screen, while you are touching the Pokeball, there are two circles visible, an outer, grey circle, and an inner, colourful circle, called the catch circle. While you're touching the Pokeball, and over the course of two seconds, the catch circle shrinks from 100% of the diameter of the grey circle to 10%. After it reaches 10%, the catch circle resets to 100% and the cycle starts again. If you throw your Pokeball and it lands inside the catch circle, you will receive an excellent throw if the catch circle is less than 30% of the gray circle, a great throw if the catch circle is less than 70% of the gray circle, and a nice throw otherwise. If you miss the catch circle, then no special throw is awarded. A nice throw resulting in a catch gives you a reward of 20 additional XP, a great throw a reward of 100 additional XP, and an excellent throw a reward of 1000 additional XP. If you've been away for a while, these values were changed in late 2020, when XP bonuses were drastically increased from previous values of 10, 50, and 100 for nice, great, and excellent throws. On top of that, the smaller the catch circle is, the better the catch rate is. As the catch circle size goes from 100% to 10%, the catch rate multiplier for hitting the catch circle goes from 1x to 1.9x. For some Pokemon, an excellent throw when the catch circle size is less than 13.5% results in a guaranteed critical catch. There are three main ways to achieve excellent throws. The first is to throw and hit the Pokemon inside the catch circle when it is less than 30% of the gray circle size, as previously described. The second is to use Buddy Catch Assist. A buddy Pokemon, at great buddy level or better, will sometimes bounce back a Pokeball that has been deflected by an attack, resulting in a successful throw. This could be triggered intentionally by throwing a Pokeball immediately when a Pokemon attacks. If the catch circle was set small enough before the attack, then this has a chance of resulting in a free excellent throw. This has the main drawbacks that it is unreliable, takes a lot of time, and uses up a lot of Pokeballs but has the advantage that it requires much less skill. The last way is to use the circle lock technique, typically for Pokemon that attack or dodge a lot. You do this by holding down a finger on the Pokeball until the catch circle reaches the size required for an excellent throw. Then, wait until the Pokemon attacks. Once it starts its attack animation, you can throw the ball, and if you release before the end of the attack animation, the circle will still be the correct size for the excellent throw. In this video, I'll only be analyzing ordinary excellent throws and ignore Buddy Catch Assist or explicit mention of circle locking. Buddy Catch Assist is an interesting topic, but the subject of another video. With circle locking, you still need to execute a successful throw, so the rest of this is still relevant. I might not need to convince you that excellent throws are worth pursuing. 
If that's the case, you can skip this. But you might be curious just how good they are. I also know a lot of you think excellent throws are too hard to bother with, and that they aren't worth the mental effort, pain, and practice it takes to get good at them. That might be true for you, but the cost-benefit on excellent throws is so good that I think it's worth trying to convince you that they're worth a try. I'll be honest, the main reason that I enjoy learning to get excellent throws is because of the challenge. It's the most skill-based element of Pokemon Go, and the vast variety of Pokemon available to catch means that you can never become perfect. There's always a new throw to master, and there's little more satisfying to me than to figure out how to get a high excellent throw rate on a Pokemon that seemed impossible at first. Yep, I'm looking at you, scumbag Squirlix. But aside from the challenge, the main reason that I started trying to get excellent throws was to earn XP faster. Leveling up in Pokemon Go is a grind, and excellent throws can make that grind more than four times easier if you become good at them. The excellent throw bonus of 1000 XP is 10 times the great throw bonus of 100 XP. This is a massive difference over many catches, and is made even more pronounced for events with XP bonuses. For example, on Grubbin Community Day, with a 3x XP bonus, I was able to achieve 929,000 XP from 308 catches, a rate of about 3,000 XP per catch. Some of this was done with a lucky egg, but most wasn't. With even consistent great throws, you would expect something closer to 200,000 XP for the 308 Pokemon caught, each yielding 270 XP with a 3x multiplier, ignoring lucky eggs. Let's do a little math. How good do you have to be at excellent throws for them to beat consistent great throws? For a typical catch with a great throw, you will get 100 XP for the catch, 100 XP for the great throw, 20 XP for the curveball, and maybe 50 XP for the first throw, for a total of 270 XP per catch. For a typical catch with an excellent throw, you will get 100 XP for the catch, 1000 XP for the excellent throw, 20 XP for the curveball, and maybe 50 XP for the first throw, for a total of 1170 XP per catch. This gives a ratio of 1170 XP divided by 270 XP, which is about 4.3. This means that for every excellent throw, you have to throw 4.3 great throws to earn the same amount of experience. Or in other words, if you can get an excellent on even a quarter of your throws, you will beat getting great throws on every single throw. If you can make excellent throws even a quarter as often as great throws, it's worth it to go for excellent throws. And with practice, it is possible to make excellent throws much more often than a quarter of the time. If you don't know how, then watch the rest of the video. The second reason for learning excellent throws is that throws on smaller catch circles give you a much better catch rate. A max size nice throw gives you a 1x catch rate multiplier, i.e. no bonus at all. A max size great throw gives you a 1.3 catch rate multiplier. And a max size excellent throw gives you a 1.7 catch rate multiplier. The best possible excellent throw, when the catch circle is 10% of the diameter of the gray circle, gives you a 1.9 catch rate multiplier. As a pedantic side note, the catch rate doesn't care if you got a great or excellent, it only cares about the size of the catch circle. A min size great and a max size excellent have almost exactly the same catch rate. That aside, this catch rate difference is pretty important for multiple reasons. First, because Pokemon escape less often, it helps you save Pokeballs which are often a limited resource. Second, it takes less time on average to catch Pokemon, since they escape less often. This means you can catch more Pokemon in less time, making you more efficient at gathering candy and XP. Let's compare the efficiency for max size great throws and excellent throws for a catch event like a community day. For the sake of argument, let's say that you encounter a large number of level 20 Bidoofs. If you throw 1.7x multiplier excellent throws instead of 1.3 multiplier great throws, how much more quickly would you be able to catch 100 of them? It would be faster, because you would be wasting less time in Pokemon who break free from your catch attempts. But exactly how much faster is it, really? Using a catch rate calculator, we see that with great throws, we expect 1.32 throws during the encounter, and 8% of all encounters will result in the Bidoof fleeing. With excellent throws, we expect 1.2 throws during the encounter, and only 5% of all encounters will eventually result in the Bidoof fleeing. Let's compare efficiency for catching 100 Bidoofs. With great throws, we would have to encounter a total of 109 Bidoofs to account for the 8% flea rate. These 109 Bidoof encounters would require 109 times 1.32 throws, 
which is about 143 total throws. With excellent throws, we would have to encounter a total of 105 Bidoofs to account for the 5% flea rate, and make 105 times 1.2 throws per encounter, which is a total of about 126 throws. Overall for this scenario, it means making great throws takes about 143 divided by 126, or 13% more throws for the same result, due to the catch rate difference. It turns out that the efficiency benefit from excellent throws depends on the base catch rate of the Pokémon, and the difference becomes more pronounced for more difficult to catch Pokémon. For level 30 Cyndaquil, for example, it takes about 362 throws to catch 100 with great throws, and about 289 throws to catch 100 with excellent throws, meaning it takes 25% more great throws for the same result. Another amazing efficiency improvement for mass catching is to use quick catch, but I'll leave that discussion for another video. Improved catch rate is also important for successfully catching raid bosses, particularly from 5 or 6 tier raids. For example, given 15 premier balls, the chance of catching a Latios with max size great throws on every throw is 75%, while the chance of catching it with max size excellent throws is 84% a pretty substantial improvement of 9%. I hope by now that I've convinced you of the benefits of excellent throws. You get way more XP, significantly higher catch efficiency, and, at least for me, they're more fun. But how do you get good at it? Well, that really depends on where you're starting from, so let's talk about progressing your throw abilities, and then later we'll get into the technical details. First, if you're still throwing straight balls, Stop it! Get some help. It may feel unnatural at first, but just throw a curveball every time. In a short time, it will feel normal. And in this game, curveballs give you vastly more control over the throw than straight throws, so curving is necessary for maximum precision. Plus, curveballs give a 1.7x catch rate multiplier along with 20 XP, on top of any multiplier from a nice, great, or excellent throw. The basic pattern for an excellent curveball is to throw at a 45 degree angle in the direction of your choosing. You can start the throw from anywhere you'd like, but my suggestion is to start from one of the lower corners. In my case, the lower right corner. Starting in the corner gives you more flexibility in the throw. Some Pokémon require a very far throw, and you'll find that you're able to throw the ball farther from the corner because the path of the throw can be slightly longer. I wasn't able to consistently hit distant Pokémon like throw until I started throwing from the corner. I'll go into more specifics of adjusting throw distance later on. Once you're regularly curving and are able to hit Pokémon reasonably often, the next step to focus on is getting consistent Great Throws. The catch circle size for Great Throws is quite generous. It can be up to 70% of the diameter of the grey circle, which for most Pokémon is large. The strategy at this stage is to go for a Great Throw on every single attempt. If it seems hard, take heart. When I first started, the idea of a field research requiring 5 consecutive Great Throws seemed insane. But with practice, I've been able to make 22 excellent throws in a row on a community day. It really is a matter of practice, going for it, every single time. Once you can hit great throws reasonably consistently on most Pokémon, you're ready to jump in the deep end and start trying excellent throws. My suggestion of trying for a great throw in every single attempt doesn't translate very well to excellent throws, at first. In my experience, it's too demoralizing to attempt an excellent throw on every Pokémon if your skill isn't quite there yet. Instead, I'd suggest picking a few of the easier spawns to try first. The first Pokémon I was able to consistently make excellent throws on was Skitty, because it was spawning quite a lot at the time, and it has a reasonably generous excellent throw catch circle. But there are even easier candidates. I find Ponyta, Furfrou, Whalmer, and Slowpoke, for instance, to be fairly easy. These Pokémon are a good way to develop an intuition for throwing, because their catch circles are large enough that you don't need to have a perfectly refined, repeatable technique. For more difficult excellent throws, it is helpful to have a more systematic approach. Developing a strong intuition for the throw mechanics is good, but it's not enough for consistency on Pokémon that requires something closer to pixel perfection. In my mental model, a throw has three main components. The starting point, the release point, and the release speed. To manage these variables, I standardize the starting point to be near the lower right corner, so that I only have to think about two variables. Then, I consider the release point. For a given throw attempt, I choose a specific spot on the screen as my release point, the spot where my finger leaves the screen. For the sake of brevity, I will assume you're throwing from lower right to upper left like me. If you throw in the opposite direction, 
the technique is a mirror image of what's described here. Note that my specific technique is specific to the type of device that I use, an Android Pixel 6, but I've used other devices and they behave generally the same. That said, the fine details of each excellent throw have to be learned individually for every device. I start with a baseline guess for the correct release point, mostly based on the distance of the Pokémon. You can usually judge the distance of a Pokémon visually, though not always. Looking at the horizon can help. The higher the horizon on the screen, the closer the Pokémon is. If your throws tend to overshoot or hit the top of the Pokémon, then it's close. If your throws tend to undershoot or hit the ground, then it's far. For medium distance Pokémon, you should release just to the left of the gray circle. A little to the lower left for smaller or closer Pokémon, and a little to the upper left for larger or farther Pokémon. For much closer or farther Pokémon, this will need to be adjusted, sometimes by a lot. For example, very close Pokémon like Weedle or Swirlix require the throw to be released almost directly beneath the Pokémon, while very far Pokémon like Throw require the throw to be released near the upper left corner of the screen. After choosing a release point, I then select my release speed based mostly on intuition. Release speed is much harder to quantify than the point at which your finger leaves the screen. I find that for most throws, a moderate, natural release speed is fine, and the release point is all that needs to be adjusted. But for particularly atypical throws, it will need to be adjusted. For very close Pokémon, the release speed generally needs to be very low so the ball doesn't overshoot, while for very far Pokémon, the release speed needs to be very high so that the ball doesn't fall short. You will likely miss most of your first excellent throw attempts. That's okay, and it's all part of the learning process. You should select the first few Pokémon you try to master based on which ones are spawning a lot at the time. The best practice is during a spotlight hour or community day, when a huge number of a single Pokémon are spawning. The key to improvement is in how you adjust your throw when it fails. You should make micro-adjustments, mostly to your release point, to bring the throw closer to hitting the center of the Pokémon. The important thing is to always have a deliberately chosen release point and release speed that can be slowly adjusted as you dial in the throw. While adjusting your throw is in large part a process that requires intuition and feel, let's look at some examples of adjustments that you can make to a throw. Generally, if you hit too far to the left of the Pokémon, you should adjust your release point to the right, or decrease your release speed to allow the Pokéball more time to curve. Similarly, if you hit too far to the right of the Pokémon, you should adjust your release point to the left, or increase your release speed to allow the Pokéball less time to curve. If you hit too high on the Pokémon, you should move your release point down the screen, or reduce your release speed. If you hit too low on the Pokémon, or hit the ground in front of it, you should move your release point up the screen, or increase your release speed. Likely, any given throw will require an adjustment to both the horizontal and vertical axis, and may require changes to both release point and release speed. It's difficult to give general advice that's more specific than that. To become consistent across a wide variety of all Pokémon is a matter of practice and continual adjustment. There are over 800 Pokémon in Pokémon Go. It sounds like a lot of work to dial in an excellent throw on every Pokémon, and it is. Fortunately, there are clusters of Pokémon that all have very similar throws. For example, despite their different appearances, Vulpix and Bergmite have almost identical excellent throw technique. Likewise, there are a huge number of Pokémon that have a similar throw, with a release point just slightly to the lower left of the gray circle, and a moderate release speed. Once you have learned the excellent throw on 10 to 20 different Pokémon, you'll be able to generalize your skills to new Pokémon much more quickly. For instance, while Frigibax rarely spawns, I'm able to get excellent throws on it because it's basically the same as most other similar looking Pokémon, just released to the lower left of the gray circle with moderate speed. But sometimes it is just difficult to figure out an excellent throw. The inspiration for this channel, the excellent Pokédex, came from me trying to get an excellent throw on a Swinub. I really wanted to just watch a video that showed exactly how the finger moved in order to get an excellent on this Pokémon, but I couldn't find any resource like this. So once I was a bit better at excellent throws, I decided to create those videos myself, and this is the result. I don't have a huge library of uploaded guide videos yet but I have literally hundreds of recordings of excellent throws on hundreds of different Pokémon, all with finger tracking information on the screen. The raid boss videos are the most popular, but I honestly think the most useful ones are the regular Pokémon, like Swinub, that you tend to encounter all the time. 
If you can get 1000 XP instead of 200 XP on every swine up, this makes a big difference, because you tend to encounter a lot of them. If you want to get the best use out of these videos, then watch them and use their suggestions as a starting point for your release point and general approach to the throw. Your device may be a little different, but the general idea will translate. There's so much more to say, but I'll leave it there for now. With a flick of the wrist, it takes to the sky, a sphere of dreams soaring, aiming high, gliding through air, with grace it flies, destined for greatness where victory lies. In the heart of the circle, it finds its place, a testament to perseverance, more than just grace. In that moment, hope and skill entwine, a perfect throw where dreams align. More than perfect, perhaps, but excellent. Thanks for watching the excellent Pokédex. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.